First of all, congratulations on this film. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun. Thank you. Um, you know, I feel a little obsessed with We Are Lady Parts. Uh, I was, um, I used to coordinate our Spirit Awards nominating committee. So I was on the TV committee that were oh, really? coordinating the year of, of We Are Lady Parts. And I won't say who, it, it, we always have a lot of industry people on those panels. I won't say who it was because it's a recognizable name, but one of the women um, on that panel is a Muslim American filmmaker and writer. And when we talked about We Are Lady Parts, she just made this speech that made me cry. She was just like, I don't know if you know how important this project is, but we need, it's, we need to lift it up, not only because it's freaking fantastic, but it's representation that's just, we just haven't had before. And so I wanted to ask you, you had an interesting journey with We Are Lady Parts, right? The, the, your first, the first reception was, sort of drove you off of social media because people were unkind. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, how did you get from We Are Lady Parts to here? What do you think that journey was? Yeah, no, th thank you for that. Um, oh, I actually wrote the first draft of this film before I even attempted Lady Parts. It, it was 10 years ago I wrote the first draft for this and it was just wild and, you know, it was trying to do all the genres and it was the first thing I'd written out of film school. Um, but I couldn't get the film made and actually television opened up for me in a way that film didn't. Um, I started working directing pilots and, you know, in the UK directing, um, you know, writing kids television. And I got my show, We Are Lady Parts, greenlit. And that was an incredible experience. It was where I found my voice. I found what I wanted to say, the things I care about, the genre I like to work in. But it was also where I experienced that sort of backlash um, where I felt, you know, not everyone loved what I do, what I wanted to do. But, you know, going through that was so, um, you know, incredibly empowering for me it it gave me the confidence to make pe polite society it made me think actually I can stick to my guns about what I am and who I am and what I want to stay, say because just from making we are lady parts I felt that you can't please everyone when you're doing representation you've just got to stick to what you know and your own personal truth and that's what you know really gave me the confidence and also the resource to get to make polite society at this level with a studio yeah so what um, what inspired this uh, this story in this film? Your your writer director on it. What inspired the the story of polite society? Oh, I've been reflecting on this recently, and I you know I I studied martial arts as a teenager. I I have an older sister who's one year older than me, and we used to fight together. You know, actually in you know martial arts class, but also <laughs> out of the class a lot as well. And I remember like fighting with her in class and then like getting smacked down to the ground and feeling the physical pain of having my face hit the floor, but also the humiliation of teenagers laughing at you. <laughs> and there's something in that moment of like being a teenage girl and the pain of that and it working with action. And I really, I think in that moment, I'm like I need to make an action movie about what it feels like to be a, a teenage girl, I think. Yeah. And these teenage girls like really effing fight each other though. <laughs> <laughs> Like that scene, that, that fight in the bedroom where she shoves her face into the uh, the picture, yeah. and she's like, right now. Yeah. and then birds are with the hair straight. I was like, this is real. <laughs> yes. It's what it feels like to fight with your sister. Right? What What was it that that made you know you you wanted to take it that far? Did you just feel like if we take it this far, it's going to be super funny and super. Yeah. Just thrilling. I just needed to take it that far. <laughs> Cathartically. <laughs> I wished my sister could have been there. We watched it together and held each other crying. Yeah. Just because it's what it felt like. I, I have a feeling you're kind of punk rock. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Compliment. <laughs> but yeah, my sister kicked my ass lots um, when I was growing up. So I had to kind of work through some shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, for you, Priya, did, did you come into this knowing anything about martial arts or was this something that, that you had to learn for, for the film? 
I knew absolutely zilch. Like, are you nada. kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew nothing. I've never done martial arts before. I've never done stunts like this before. And I was cast about like six or seven weeks before we started the shoot. So we did a really big, deep dive. And it was really important to me that I did as much of all of the stunts as I possibly could because it's so important to Rhea. Like, I, it was kind of meta. Like, I got to be a stunt woman, which is what Rhea wants to be, um, which is amazing. And I, I attempted everything. Because I, cause I checked on you. Like, I watched it at home this this week and paused it on parts of the fight scenes. That's you. It's me. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to pause it and catch a double in there. Just no, there's no double. I do have an incredible double, Erin, who... Um, really was such a guiding light for me. I, I learned so much through even imitating her. Um, but we had such an empowering stunt team. They really encouraged me to do as much of it as I could. And, and they knew how important it was to me to do as much as I could. I was like, you know, step aside, Tom Cruise. We're, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I know, what's up with Tom Cruise? He's always hurting himself. I know, the guy has to chill, His man. Film shit. <laughs> I bet you never hurt yourself at all. I was never. <laughs> he might also be about 50 years younger than him, but. Um, so let's, let, how did you know that it was Priya? Talk about the first time. Do you guys remember your first meeting? And how did you know Priya was your girl? I mean, we were struggling to find someone who could play this part. I didn't really didn't think I had a movie um, for a long time, and we were getting close to the wire. And then I saw Priya's tape, and I'm like, "Who the hell is this? Why have I not seen this?" And then when she came in, you know, just a ray of light. Not, but I don't know. I don't feel like I have the words to describe all the things that she had that really, you know, that she brought to the character. Not only like incredibly talented but the, when when we you know filmed her the way she like she lights up the screen it is that kind of movie star quality that was just like you're so watchable but also she could do the teenage angst she could do the vulnerability and there's a kind of inherent goodness in what Priya emanates as a performer which is incredible for the character of Rhea because Rhea's super annoying sometimes and you need someone you can root Rude. for <laughs> I know and she has that and she just, she <laughs> took to the fights, like, you know, she could do the physicality. She's just trying to save people's lives, man. <laughs> like, let her be annoying if she wants to. <laughs> I love everyone who, like, jumps her. She's like, she's not annoying. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She's on a mission. <laughs> she's on a mission from God. Yes. <laughs> like the Blues Brothers. Um, Priya, so... Can you talk about like your own creative process and um, how you approach creating your characters? Oh my. First of all, I think Nida is honestly incredible. She's a genius. I say this all the time, um, but I, I cannot stress it enough. She writes with such nuance. Um, it was so easy to lift her off the page. The script truly really was my Bible. You know, when doing this, I could um, create her through your your beautiful writing of her. And and I was so lucky as well to have rehearsal time with Nida as well. So we really got to work together on her journey. And really, a lot of what we did was like mapping out how crazy and wired she is at every given moment of the film. Um, I used to like write a lot about her and I, I, I wrote... I, I, I just had like masses of notebooks <laughs> filled with pages about things that I thought about her and her life. And I'd write cue cards on literally every scene, scenes that were just me walking down a corridor. Like, what was she thinking? What was her objective? What was like this thing and that thing that was going through her head? Um, I even used to write letters to Rhea. So, you know, just so many things. <laughs> no, I remember seeing all the work that Priya did um, preparing for Rhea. And I've lived with this character for 10 years in my head. And I honestly was worried that I wouldn't be able to give it to an actor because I'm like, he's mine, you crazy. Um, but then when she comes on, I, I think I was thanking you every day because I felt like unburdened by, by the Thank character you. because she was so thoughtful and you put so much work in and is extremely talented. So I felt like... Oh, I felt free actually when you came on board. So thanks, Thank girl. <laughs> so, uh, Nita, this is your f your first feature film. Um, 
Do you want to talk about what what it was like doing? Give us an impression of what what it was like having doing your first feature project. I think in a way I feel very lucky. It was a dream scenario in many in in a big way because. I had finished We Are Lady Parts with Working Title and Tim Bevan at Working Title was like, do you have a film? We actually usually make films here. And I was like, oh, I do have this film, which had been passed by, you know, passed on by everyone in the UK industry. And he was like, oh, this is mad. And I was like, oh yeah. And he's like, you should make it more mad. And I was like, oh great. So he just really empowered me to like, just push it even further. And I got to bring on so many of my heads of department from We Are Lady Parts to this. I had the same producers. So there was like, an extreme, like an amazing continuity. So I didn't feel the step up, as it were, that much in the making of it. It felt just like, oh, we got a bit, few more toys to play with, a bit more time. It's just in actually in the edit, where then I had, we had a longer edit time. We had to do test screenings. I'm like, oh, it's studio moving. We have to test it. We have to make sure audiences like it so we can sell tickets. You know, then I felt the machine really come into play um, in post. But actually, I feel like we really benefited from the test screening because it's a bonkers film, because it's got all this tonal mishmashing. We needed to feel, I needed to feel it with audiences and see where I could just improve it and hone it and fine tune the tone. And that, you know, that was so much in the edit. Do you, for each of you, do you have a particularly memorable day of difficulty? Or, or, or conversely, a a day of that's just memorable for other reasons. I loved shooting the gym heist. Just because her dressed as Brown Mario <laughs> was just constantly, every time she walked past any one of the crew, we just like, <laughs> um, and you smashed it with that swagger. We're like, who I is I practice he? that walk very regularly. I love it that none of those dudes in the gym locker room like batted an eye. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite. I was. I think we were all bonkers, and I was couldn't like keep keep it together when we were shooting the gym. Yeah, guys. that was really hard to keep a straight face in. It was definitely one of the times. <laughs> I remember I like convinced myself that if I couldn't get through a take, I'd be fired. So <laughs> I'd actually stop laughing. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was really fun. I feel in terms of challenging, I think one of the really interesting things about this film as well is like obviously how somebody called it genre fluid, which I thought was a really cool term to use in yeah, this. Cool. And and um, yeah, I really think that speaks true to this. And And I remember one day, like I came in, we had half an hour, in half an hour, I learned an entire fight sequence, which was the fight sequence of the um, Rhea fighting off the masseuses at or Nimra's, um, <laughs> Nimra's mansion. I mean, Rahila's mansion. And um, I learned the fight in half an hour. We shot that for like four hours. We had lunch break. I came back and then shot the scene where basically Rhea cries for three hours because her sister tells her she's not going to be a stunt woman. And then the rest of the evening we spent out in the freezing cold, me like running around the mansion being like a crazy kid. And I was like to jump from so many different genres to jump from so many important moments in the film and to sh be able to showcase skill in so many different ways um, was like a really challenging day. Yeah. So incredible. You had an fulfilling. entire dance routine as well. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah, you, that was fun. Had, had you danced before? It was, uh, was it particularly difficult to learn the dance routine? Or Actually, I found that easier than the fights. Um, so... <laughs> I have done dance in my life before. I will, I'm no, by no means a professional dancer. Um, but I, I did Paranatyam, for anyone that knows, um, when I was younger and also did bits of Gothak, um, Bollywood dance, street, commercial. As I was growing up, I've always loved performance. So um, for me, dance comes a little bit more naturally than the martial yeah. arts. Um, and we got to work with an incredible choreographer, Nalika Bose, um, in, in London, and she choreographed the whole fight. And the, the most fun as well was to bring Rhea into it because she just adds her own little crazy. As somebody who grew up watching Bollywood films, and I distinctly remember watching Div Thus when I was younger, and to be able to recreate that scene honestly was a dream come true. But, and like to put a little extra Rhea twist on it, which just made it very fun. <laughs> I wondered if there was going to be a moment where someone was going to break out into song, like like Bollywood <laughs> stuff. I'm like, okay, we're at a wedding. 
It's got to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really excited when there was a dance number. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, lo I love that genre fluid. I love that. Uh, when I was watching it the second time, I was trying to think of all the genres that come up for me when, when I was watching it. Definitely Bollywood, Kung Fu. I think I remember reading that you like Kung Fu movies a lot, right? Yeah. Was there a particular Kung Fu movie you wanted to emulate for this? I mean, I think my first real kind of experience of Kung Fu was watching The Matrix when I was like 11 and that just blowing my mind. And then you watch the making of, and then that opens up actual Hong Kong Kung Fu and Jet Li movies and, you know, Wu Ping films. And like, you know, I loved the, the balletic nature of those films, but also I felt there was a real, you know, closeness to the Bollywood I grew up on. There's like spectacle cinema, event cinema, you go, you know, the experience of, just entertainment and spectacle was something I think I just, it was part of the cinema I grew up on and Hong Kong Kung Fu spoke to that really close. I think that's why the two things, you know, the wedding sequence at the end, I wanted to bring the kind of, the the fun kind of absurd Bollywood tenor, and high, you know, um, yeah, over the topness with the kind of Kung Fu. I love that was such a joyful thing to do, but you know, speaking of genres, I grew up also really loving teen movies, especially American teen movies as sort of the groundedness, the respect of the teenager. I was talked about Slums, Slums of Beverly Hills are being like one of my favorite, all time yes. favorite teen <laughs> movies. And just like the truth of what it means to be a teenage girl. Um, but you know, also like Donnie Darko, it goes down that sort of teen, but bringing that in with, ball, you know, it's all, yeah. it's a kind of love letter to the films I loved. And, you know, thinking of making a, a film that, my teenage self would really like. Right. And the way we, me and my DOP, Ashley Connor, approached it was like, this is a film that is made by Rhea Khan. So it needs to film like a, feel like a teenager making a movie, which also got us out of jail a few times. Like, was that in focus? It doesn't matter, it's a teenager's film. Uh, <laughs> she made it, it's fine. <laughs> we don't, uh, it's okay. Rhea will fix it in post. She'll fix it in post, she'll fix it in post. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, so uh, is there, uh, sorry, I lost my place in this. <laughs> um, I get a little blah, 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 blah sometimes. Um, so with We Are Lady Parts, I, I wanted to, actually with the themes of this film, uh, I wanted to talk about what the themes of this film are and um, how they reflect um, your feelings about things um, with both this film and We Are Lady Parts is explorations of of women being forced into marriage or obsessed with marriage, like freely obsessed with wanting to marry. It seems to be a lot of questions around relationships and uh, expectations around women and yeah. relationships. Yeah, you know, I can speak for myself as a filmmaker and I realized as I kind of think about it, I always... I definitely felt the pressure of being the good girl growing up in like performing a certain way of being that is sort of polite, uh, uh. Um, you know, just sort of staying in my box, don't upset the apple cart, being the kind of good daughter, getting the good job and just really feeling the pressure of that. Um, and I really realized in my art, in We Are Lady Parts, in Polite Society, I wanted to explore a kind of the anarchy, I was feeling that the rage, the the kind of desire to be an artist, which I didn't feel I was being, you know, was something that was supported in the kind of culture I grew up in. So, so much of that angst kind of comes through in the work. And also as I've been reflecting on the co comparing We Are Lady Parts to Polite Society. We, we Are Lady Parts is about a, a band, a punk band playing instruments. It's a kind of physicality to what they do. Polite Society is an action movie about women being physical in their bodies, you know, and again, I think as a teenage girl, I remember this moment where I felt like I kind of divided from my body, where you go from being a child to then being objectified and like the strange feeling of not feeling one with yourself. And I felt like with, you know, women playing music and women fighting, it's sort of, you kind of get to be one with, your, there's a physicality to that. And I realized there's something in that, in that of like, yeah, expressing oneself and including an embodied way of being that I, I really see in both pieces of work. Uh, we Are Lady Parts, I was re-watching it recently again. It made me think of when I got into Riot Girl music. Yes. Because Riot Girl music is great, but also when you sort of 
listen to the lyrics and get into the ideology of it. Yeah. And it's like, these women do have a lot to rage about. You, you know, it's like, oh, I wouldn't think of like um, British Muslim women having a punk band, but I was like, wait, <laughs> they have the most rage. Yeah. They have the most reason to rage out and have a punk band. And, yeah. and the same with this, you know, you wouldn't think to find these people in an action film or, you know, beating each other up, knowing martial arts. Um, but you do, and I love the way that your projects find a way for all these things to exist together. Thank you. Yeah. I love that you're exploring that. So um, can you, either of you talk about, either or both, talk about what, what you have com might have coming up next? Mm. They're like, no. <laughs> I've got Lady Parts series too, which I'm furiously writing in the yeah. background. Oh my god, you're doing another season? Yeah, it's another, another series. That's, that's happening also, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, more fun music. But you know, it's been such a joy to do action and explore femininity and womanhood through the genre and actually use the genre to like f explore what it feels like to be a teenage girl. And I want to ex just, yeah. I want to continue to work in action and see how I can bring kind of outsider stories into this space and really kind of center women of color. And, and you know, I enjoy big spectacle. I enjoy genre. I enjoy, yeah, again, using genre and, yeah, bringing stories from a different point of view into mainstream genre, big genre, fun. Um, and let's see, you know, it's the opening weekend this weekend. I hope you guys go out and see it. <laughs> Encourage your friends. Do it. Because, you know, it's... If it does well at the box office, it really helps more stories yeah. get supported in the cinema. It helps us get yeah, to absolutely. make more movies. Yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome. Go support, guys. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Pre do you have Bridgerton part 12 coming up? <laughs> part 12. Um, I will not be in the next season of Bridgerton. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited for what they're doing. And um, yeah, can't wait to watch it. And obviously there's like lots of trickling conversations. So hopefully um, in the coming months, there'll be a lot more to share about next steps and new journeys. So yeah. <laughs> Basically, after this comes out, Priya is going to be non-affordable. So... <laughs> None of you guys will be able to look her in the eyes. No. <laughs> I'm always like, please work with me again. You promise? You promise? No, no. Please work <laughs> with me again. You have to promise. <laughs> Polite society too, baby. <laughs> well, congratulations uh, on this film. And thank you so much to the two of you for coming out to talk to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>